Hi guys. So I've tried very hard to just make videos about Jesus, but watching the direction this country is going in, watching as we follow in the footsteps of Israel, um, when it fell after Solomon's kingdom, I have to say something. So, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty, and Jesus Christ the Lamb who is slain for us. Lord, may your blessings of peace and love and happiness be upon everyone who watches these videos. Lord, please help us um, understand and retain the knowledge and wisdom that we read today, Lord. Jesus, I pray that you heal Kim and that you make him better, Lord. And I pray that you protect him and the children. Lord, I pray that you help and bless and comfort and heal and protect the flood victims in Pakistan, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you only, that your Holy Spirit speaks through me only today. And Lord, help us not back down from any giants. And there are many big giants in our country right now that are not from you, Lord. They're from the devil. So help us Christians be strong, Lord, and be righteous, Lord. And that is how we will fight to keep our nation, this great country that it is. Lord, I pray... I pray that you help us, Lord. Help us keep our nation, this great nation. Lord, help us not take you out of this nation. Help us not follow in the footsteps of Israel. You gave us, you wrote down the examples of Israel in the Bible, Lord, so we would not follow in their footsteps. And that is what we're doing, Lord. And I ask that you help us fight to keep this nation, the great nation that it is, Jesus. Lord, thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you so much for blessing us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for giving us your holy word so that we will learn from Israel's examples and not follow in their footsteps, Lord. Jesus, we just glorify you and magnify you. And Lord, we thank you that it's not too late for this country, Lord. Help us fight. And that is what we're going to talk about, Lord. We just glorify you. We magnify you. We praise you and worship you, Jesus, because it is because of you that this country is what it is. It is because of you that we are one of the greatest nations on earth, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Please help us keep it this way. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you and we pray and ask these things in your holy, precious name, Jesus. Amen. So be it. Okay, so I was thinking of a song fitting for what I'm going to talk about today. And I couldn't think of any until I was at church and we sang Sea of Victory by Elevation Worship. So it's written by Ben Fielding, Chris Brown, Jason Ingram, and Stephen Furtick. And that's what we're going to sing today. So just a sec. Okay, this is from church today. Worship you. Open 
You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Okay, the end. <laughs> um, I believe that what the enemy took for evil, I mean, okay, so obviously the devil is behind everything that's going on in our country right now. But the Lord is going to take what he meant for evil and he's going to turn it for good. And I believe that with all my heart. And I don't know how. But he will. Okay. So. When Solomon, when it was Solomon's reign back in the day. It was the great Israel, Jerusalem was the it was the greatest nation on earth, flooded with gold and jewels and money. They had everything. They had so much that even back then people were overweight and they were so spoiled by the Lord. And then what happened? They thought they stopped needing the Lord. And then, of course, Israel fell. So, I'm going to read 1 Kings 11, 1 through 11 in the New International Version. <clears throat> okay. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their, go their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David, his father, had been. He followed Ashtoreth. I think that's that Asherah god too, that pole god chick. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't follow the Lord completely as David, his father, had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all his foreign wives who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude and you've not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. And then in verse 33, the Lord said, I will do this. Because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Molech, the god of the Ammonites, and have not walked in obedience to me, nor done what is right in my eyes, nor kept my decrees and laws as David Solomon's father did. So, the Old Testament was written to warn us not to follow in the Israelites' footsteps. And then, um, because they thought they stopped needing God. And if we take one nation under God out of our country, we will fall just like Israel. And we're repeating history, doing the very thing Jesus warned us not to do 
which is following in Israel's footsteps. So, I have so many questions. But first, I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 in the New International Version so that we know how to fight these dark powers. Okay, so Ephesians 6, through, 6, 10 through 12 in the New International Version says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles, not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So what, what is the full armor of God? Always saying the truth, being as righteous as you possibly can, making peace, your salvation in the Lord, your faith in the Lord. And finally, the word of God. So, what I want to know, so this is how we fight it. But what I want to know is, who, who is this dark power and authority in, in our nation right now. And like, do they go, you know that movie Spectre, uh, that 007 movie, when all those evil people are, were all gathered together, scheming and plotting and doing their evil stuff? Like, does that really happen? Is it like an international Spectre meeting where they get together and do these evil schemes and plans? Or is it like a, just a national American specter meeting? Like, who are they? Are they just really rich people? Are they, it's probably rich people mixed with politicians. And like, how do these people have so much power that they have the means and ability to control the authors of textbooks to write in them critical race theory? How do they have so much power that they can change textbooks for our children? Like, how are they able to control this? And then how are they able to tell, okay, so the teachers union, I guess if teachers go against the teachers union in America, they're like ousted not protected and blacklisted. And so like teachers are under this evil force to do what the teachers union tells them to do. And you know, how do these people have so much power that they can tell teachers to start calling themselves racist just cause they're white and then telling people if they're black or a minority that they're a victim. My best friend is black. And could you imagine if I went up to her tomorrow and said, hey, Gina. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to say your name. <laughs> hey, girlfriend. I just want you to know that I'm racist. And she'll be like, what the? What are you talking about? Why, why would you say that? You're not racist. What do you mean? What, what happened? What's going on? You know? And I'd be like, oh, nothing. It's just because I'm white. I'm just racist because I'm white. And just so you know, you're a victim because you're black. Like, sh she would be like, what the? What are you talking about? How are you even? What is going through your head right now? And in this nation, whoever these dark Whoever this dark power is, this dark authority, it, they're so powerful that they're able to start resegregating us. We worked so hard to become one nation together, all colors, and now they're separating us again from white and black people. If you're white, you're racist. If you're black or a minority, you're a victim. Like, how are you... How are they able to do all this crazy stuff? 
how are they able to, to, how do they get this power? It, I, you know, like, they're starting to teach people that teach children that America is a bad place to live. When in reality, it's the greatest nation in the world. Why do you think people flood into this country right now? Because they're sick of li living under communist regimes and dictatorships and tyrants. And it like, and, and how are they able to turn people against police who keep law and order? Like, do we really want to turn into Venezuela or Afghanistan or Iran or Iraq or the Chinese Communist Party or North Korea? Like, I don't understand where this power is coming from. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand how they're able to accomplish these things. I don't understand who's doing this to our country. And how do they have so much power to try and fix something that ain't broke? And I seriously wonder if the Chinese Communist Party purposely released the coronavirus to try and make us dependent on the government, to try and turn us into a socialist society. And do you know what socialism turns into? Communism. Like, I think people look at Canada and say, oh, well, it works for them, it'll work for us. In reality, there are salary caps on every profession in Canada. They are taxed 55% of their salary. So they only get to take home 45% of what they make. And because the Lord has blessed us and spoiled us so much, if this were to happen, because we have become fat and lazy like the Israelites did. Just that we're repeating history and we have the means to stop it and it's through the Lord. But a lot of people in America will just stop working. And so do you think our taxes are going to stop at 55% here in America? No, it's going to go up to 65, 75% because we'll be having to support the whole nation who's not working. And so. How do we fight this? How do we keep our nation. The way it is. And it's through prayer. And it's through doing righteous things. And right now we're not having to actually physically fight but if we don't stop what we're doing our country's going to go into a civil war and and I I am thankful those teachers in Virginia stood up for what they knew was right not the teachers the uh parents in Virginia stood up for what they knew was right and then this dark power had the power to sick the FBI after them. Like, who, who is this? Who are these people that are controlling all this stuff in America? Like, who told a bunch of rioters to go and assault P the police and buildings in 2020? I, I just don't understand who this is. I know who's behind it. His name is the devil, Satan. But how are they able to accomplish all these things? How are they able to have so much power over authors of textbooks? So much power over teachers unions? So much power to try and turn our country into something that half of us don't want the country to be turned into Yet they're pushing it on us. Like, how, who are these people?
I just, I don't understand. I don't know, I don't want us to repeat history and have everything taken from us because we kicked the Lord out of our country. And if we do that, if we take in God we trust off our money, if we take one nation under, we don't even say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore, hardly. And pretty soon I know that they're going to try and take one nation under God out of our Pledge of Allegiance. And I don't want this to happen. I don't want us to follow in Solomon's footsteps and have the greatest kingdom that ever reigned on this earth fall and crumble because the Lord is so mad at us. And how we have to fight it is being righteous, putting on the armor of God and through prayer. And, you know, it says in Ecclesiastes, there's time for peace, there's time for war, there's time for fighting, there's time for healing. And and I can just see where this country's going. And it makes me sad because I feel like there's going to be a civil war or a... I don't know what it would look like. A, a holy war in this country? I don't know. But I just don't know who these... Who these people are. But we can take a stand against the devil's schemes. By putting on the full armor of God. And... I just... The point of my lesson today is to try and open people's eyes and to try and make people think and to try and not let what's happening to this country continue. Because I guarantee you, we will fall if we take the Lord out of this country. And I don't want that to happen because it's the greatest nation on earth. And we're so spoiled here because of the Lord. And people don't see that. And I want people to know that in their hearts. That the reason we're such a flourishing nation is because of the Lord. Because his favor is upon us. And he can take it away just like that. And we'll fall just like that. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, please let this message sink into the hearts of all the believers in this country, Lord. Please help us stand up and fight for you, Jesus. Please give us the strength to... Stand up for you, Lord, to stand up for our great nation, to keep it a great nation, Lord. Please don't let these evil schemes of the devil roll over onto us, Lord. Help us fight back, Lord, and it's by being righteous. It's by being truthful. It's by being peaceful. It's by believing in you, Lord. It's by our salvation and it's by your holy word, Lord. And I pray, I pray that you help us be strong for you, Lord. I pray that you help us stand up for this country, which is, in my opinion, the greatest nation on earth. Why would people want to come flood into this country if it wasn't? Lord, help us realize that the reason we're so great is because of you, Jesus. Open our eyes, open our hearts, Lord, open our ears. Help us fight back like those parents in Virginia did. Help us stand up for what's right, Lord. No matter what the devil will throw at us, Lord, you are more powerful than him. And we need you, Lord, and we can fight back. And 
Lord, we need your help. Not physically fight yet, because that's not where we are yet. But if we continue where we're going, that's where we will be. Jesus, we just love you so much. We are so thankful that you are the God of our nation. We are so thankful for everything that you bless us with here, Lord. Half of the world sleeps in the dirt, Lord. Just, Lord, help us open our hearts and eyes and understand that we're great because of you, Jesus. We just love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you bless us with, especially here in America, Lord. Help us fight to keep it this way. We just love you so much, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Jesus. And we pray and ask these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. So be it. Okay. God bless. I love you guys.